Last week I gave you an illustration about people that climb a mountain sitting right over there by the guitar. I gave you an illustration about climbing a mountain and that when people get ready to climb a mountain, a high mountain, if you will, and it's dangerous terrain, steep and everything, as there is a bunch of those, what they will do, you know, you get right over here, you get in the middle, you get there. What they will do is that they will take the rope, take the rope. You got too much slack. Too much slack, too much slack, too much slack. Now wrap that rope around you. Lasso it in there, partner. And then, and then wrap that one around you. Bring her, cinch her tight, cinch her tight. Now, again, those of you here last week know how, why they do this. Why, though, when they climb the mountain, why do they tie themselves to each other? Because if one falls, the other then are there to save them, safety rope, if you will, to be able to pull them back up. But as we told you last week, when this guy begins to move, he can only go as far as these will let him go. So if he is going to advance up the mountain, then these two here have to keep up with him. Otherwise, he's all the time going back. Can I get an amen? Well, we did this last week. And so what we talked about last week, about things in our life that if they do not advance with us, then we are not going to advance. So many times we can come back and we can be wanting and we'll say, man, I'm going to go forward for God. We go forward for God, but we hit the end of our rope. Because there are things in our life that are not maturing or not growing along with us, and so they hold us back. And I think there's a lot of times that people are very frustrated in where they're at. Let's take about two steps forward and get on this line right there. That's good. There, there's just a lot of people then that are, that are frustrated in their walk with God simply because they say, I want to do great things for God in this year. I want to do a whole lot for them. And boy, they take off, but then they hit the end of the rope and they become frustrated because of those other things that are in their life that they're not advancing forward. Are you with me where we were last week? Now, last week we talked to you about how you spend your time. And the two things that we said that you need to spend your time in is in prayer and in the study of God's word. And we tied those two together. I don't have time to go through that. Go back and watch it. That's why it's on our YouTube channel. And I encourage you, go back and, and watch our messages during the week because you're observing it here, uh, absorbing it here in the atmosphere that we're in. But you'll be able, when you sit down with your Bible and watch it, you'll find another level that it will go to as the Word of God is implanted in your life. So we talked about how that we need prayer and the Word of God. And that's what we're doing in these 21 days, that we're not merely just spending time in prayer, but we're spending time in His Word. Because those are the two that feed each other. But I'm going to talk about this next one here that I think also is something that, that we forget about. Because as we get ready to move forward, come here, D, stand right there. So as, as, as we move forward in our prayer and our reading of the word, again, we can only get so far if this one doesn't come along. So you may be advancing forward out there, and you've got your prayer time, you've got the time with your word and everything, it's ready to go, but you're going to find there's something else that will hold you back, and that's what I want to talk about today, all right? All right, center back up, guys, and just take a break. Stand right there, because I'm going to use you a little bit, little bit more today. I, I think what, not only how we spend our time, but what we do with the talents that God has given us. With the talents that God has given. I know some of you say, well, I'm not talented. Well, you've got to understand, each one of us have giftings and abilities that God has given us. Can I get an amen? amen. Things that we are good at that God gave us to help us advance not only ourselves, but also to advance the kingdom of God. Remember, it's God's desire that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. Everybody would get saved. That's God's desire. The organization that he left here on this earth to cause that to happen is what? It's the church. It's the body of Christ. But I believe the reason that we are not personally advancing in the kingdom of God is, and I think also the reason the church is not advancing, it's not that we don't want to. It's not that we're praying for it. It's not that we're, we're, we're reading the word for it, but it's not because we're not using our talents the way God would have us to use them. Okay, let me just tell you about the body brothers. Everybody say the body brothers. So there's the body brothers here. Once upon a time, there were four brothers, somebody, everybody, anybody, and nobody. Everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. Now, they were all belonged to the same church, but you would not have enjoyed worshiping with them. Everybody went fishing on Sunday. Somebody was always staying at home to visit with a friend. 
anybody wanted to go to church but was afraid somebody wouldn't speak to him. So who did go? You're right, nobody. Really, nobody was the only decent one of the four. Nobody did the visitation. Nobody worked on the church building. That's what nobody did. Once they needed a children's worker. Everybody thought anybody would do it, and anybody thought somebody would do it, and you know who did it? It happened that a non-believer moved into their town. Everybody thought somebody should try to win him to the Lord. Anybody could have made an effort. Well, who finally won him? Don't you know who it was? Nobody. We've all got abilities. God gave us our talents and our gifts. Our talents are the things that we have learned to do and the things that we love to do. Many times it's the way that we make our living. We can see what our talents and our gifts are. Don't just think about something that you do on a stage. No, it's those gifts and the abilities, and each one of you has those. God didn't give you that ability just for you to make a living with, but to advance the kingdom of God. We are the body of Christ here on this earth. Can I get an amen? Amen. We are his hands extended. Now with that then in mind, let's do a little quick Bible study here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse 12, because the Apostle Paul talks about the body of Christ. Let me read it to you quickly. Just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit as to form one body, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, and we are all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part but many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I don't, have, I don't belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an ear, I do not belong to the body, it for that reason would not, would not stop being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts. Everybody say many parts. Many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. Can I get an amen? Amen. Let me give you four things out of that that you need to understand about who you are in the body of Christ. First of all, all members are necessary. All members are necessary. When I say members, I'm not talking about members of churches. I'm talking about members of the part of the body of Christ. How many of you are part of the body of Christ? Can I get an amen? You're born again. You are a part of the body of Christ. It says in verse 15, now if the foot shall say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. Many people don't get involved because they don't feel important. Well, I'm not important. They don't really need me. We feel inadequate that we are not good enough and that we don't deserve it. Let me just tell you right now, that's not what the word of God says. Hebrews chapter 11 or chapter two, verse 11 says, but the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sister. Jesus calls you his brother. Jesus calls you his sister. We've got to stop comparing ourselves. Well, I don't have as much talent as them. I can't do this. I can't. Let me tell you, you have as much talent as God has given you and God has given you the talent that you need. You are not at inadequate. You are necessary. Come on, somebody say amen. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. At the end of that, it says God himself has assigned to us. So if you start griping about what you got, you need to gripe to God because he's the one that gave it to you. Our measure is God. You are not inferior. You are necessary to the body of Christ. Verse 22 says, on the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. You think of your hearts and your lungs. You can't see those. Well, they're not really not that important. Let me tell you, it's pretty important with your heart. You just try to make it without your heart and your lungs, and you are not going to make it. 
So all members are necessary. Turn to somebody and say, you are necessary. Turn to the other person and say, so are you. Second thing, all members are different. All members are different. Can I get an amen there? It says in verse 17, if the whole body were one eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? We all cannot be the same. If everybody was the pastor, we'd all be up here and there'd be nobody out there. If everybody played the piano, man, wouldn't that be a loud bunch of noise? Everybody can't be a, everybody's not a children's minister. Everybody is not an usher. We are all different. God has given us different talents and different abilities. God made us different. And if you don't believe that, look around. We got some different people in this place today. So God made us different. Verse 18, it says, but in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to. Don't try to be somebody else. You be who you are. You, you capitalize on what God has given you and how God has made you because, again, you are different. Verse 4 says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit uh, distributes them. Different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and everyone, it is the same God that is work. God made us different. That's why we got different churches in this city. You say, well, if, if, you, there's so many churches, there shouldn't be, should just be one church. Well, let me just tell you right now, there is one church. Well, you know, they're just, they're just, it's all the same. There should just be one McDonald's. Why well, do you think McDonald's puts one on every street corner? Because every street corner is an opportunity for them to sell a hamburger. And God puts churches all over this city because there are people that need Jesus in every part of this city. Come on, give me an Amen. There are different flavors. There are different styles. My goodness, I would scare some church people to death if I went to some other churches and started preaching like this. And if their pastor came here, you'd be snoring. Does that mean I'm right and they're wrong or vice versa? No, there are different styles. Some of you go to Italian restaurants. Some of you go to Spanish, Mexican restaurants. Some of you go to uh, uh, Korean restaurants. You know, we all go to different types of restaurants because we like different types of food. And so just because we are different, that's not a weakness. That is the strength of the body of Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. You are different. We're all different. And there are different ministries that are in the church. That's why we don't compete against other churches. We're not competing against other churches. We want to be a complement to other churches that are in this town. So all members are necessary. All members are different. And then thirdly, there must be unity. For this thing to work, there has got to be unity. Verse 20 of 1 Corinthians 12 says, And as it is, there are many parts, but one body. Everybody say one body. Psalms 133 says, How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That's why our our nights of prayer are so powerful. That's why these 21 days of prayer and fasting, as we're joining with churches across this community, is so powerful as we are getting together and realize that we are in the same boat. We are working together. No ministry alone. We are not trying to compete against each other. we got to guard against anything that would destroy the unity of the body of Christ. Anything that would destroy the unity within this church, anything that would, would, would hamper the unity, anything that just tries to destroy it between different churches, we can't do that. No ministry is alone, and we've got to cooperate with each other. Well, we've got to ask ourselves here at Cornerstone is how can we, everybody say we, how can we, through the power of God, build his church? You can't build it, I can't build it, but together the body of Christ can do it. That's why, again, we're necessary, we're different, but we have got to learn how to work together. Together we stand, divided we fall. So all members are necessary, all members are different. There must be unity. And fourthly, every member needs each other. Turn to somebody, look them in the eye, and just say, I need you. Now, for some of you, it was very easy to do that. For other people, it was pretty hard. I can say that. We need each other. Verse 16, it says, if the eye should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body. Well, really what that is, that, that, that's a point that we get there that, we, that we, we, we think of that we're inferior. Well, I'm not like them, so I can't. Again, that's not true. Or it says in verse 21, the eye cannot say I, to the hand, I don't need you. Well, if you're just one big eye and you don't have a hand, you ain't going to get around much. You don't have feet. You're not going to get around. We need each other. Nobody is superior to the other. Nobody is less than the other. 
We are equal in the sight of God. We have different jobs. We are different. We have different responsibilities, and we've got to carry those responsibilities out. We need each other. We, got, we can't judge each other. We don't need to classify each other. As a pastor, you need me. Oh, come on. Help me. You need me. And I need you. We need each other. That's the only way this thing works. And so, again, everyone is necessary. Everyone is different. We've got to stand united, and we need each other. Now, for the body to work, it's got to work that way. And so that, I, just, I just had to bring you into that real quick. I said, man, that's like drinking out of a fire hydrant, everything you gave me. But that's why we have it on YouTube, so you can go back and watch it again. But with that then in mind, I want to talk to you then, knowing that you are necessary, knowing you're going to be different, knowing that, again, we're going to work together in unity, that we need each other. So then how does this work in utilizing not merely my time in devotion to the Word of God and not merely my time in my time of prayer, but how does this work when it comes to advancing me and advancing the church forward to the next level? How many want to go to the next level this year? How many are ready to go to the next level this year of what God has for you? Okay, now let's go to Matthew chapter 25. I said, Pastor, man, you're reading a lot today. Yeah, I've been studying the Word today, this week. Matthew chapter 25, it's a parable that Jesus gave. So let me just read the whole thing here, beginning in verse number 14. Uh, let, me, let me paraphrase it for time's sake. Let me paraphrase it. You can go back and, and read it there through verse 30. So it says that there was a king, there was a man who master who went on a journey. Before he went on the journey, he called in his servants. He called three of his servants in, three servants here. You all come here together now, right to the center here. This would be the center and you all come stand. So he called his three servants together and he said, listen, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here for a while. I've got to go over to Pismo and, and check out what's going on over there. And so I'm going to be gone, but I'm going to leave you guys in charge while you're here. And so I'm, I'm, going, to give you, I'm going to give you some talents. I'm going to give you some stuff here. So he said, he said to one of them, he says, here, I'm going to give you five talents. It's a fiver. Give you five talents to another one. He said, I'm going to give you two talents. So I'm going to give you two talents. And you, you look like you're a one talenter. So I'll give you a one talent there. <laughs> he says, I'm going to be gone. So take that and I'll be back. So then when the king comes back, the master comes back, then he checks with these guys. And he finds out what had taken place, that the guy with the uh, five talents, that he had, he had basically doubled, and he had ten. The guy that had two, he had basically doubled, and he, he, had, he had ten, or had uh, four. The guy with the one talent, we'll talk about him a little bit later. I want to talk about what's holding you back. What is the thing, if we are a part of the body of Christ, if we are necessary, if, if we've got to work together, but the key is, is we've got to work. Everybody say work. A couple of things I want to point out from this story. First of all, everybody has been given a gift. Hold up your gift, guys. Well, some of y'all were quick to put those in your pocket. <laughs> everybody has been given. Matter of fact, everybody get a $100 bill out of your pocket and hold it up. Will you do that right now? No, no. Every one of you has been given a gift. I'm going to say that one more time. Every one of you has been given a gift. Now, to some it's five, to some it's two, to some it's one, but every one of you have been given a gift. You're not getting me. I'm going to preach it one more time. Every one of you have been given talents and abilities. You are not worthless. You are necessary. You've got something to contribute to the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about your money today. I'm talking about the giftings that God has in you. Now, now why, does, why did one guy get five? Well, that's not fair. He got five. He got two, and he just got one. That's not fair. They all should have got five. No, this is not about equity. This is about ability. Because God was able to look into him and say, you know what? You can handle five. You can handle two. You can handle one. How many of you glad that God didn't give us more than we can handle? 
Don't be start looking, oh, I could do that. I wish I had what he had and everything. You better be careful when you start wishing you had what somebody else had because you don't know what somebody else had to pay, what somebody else had to do, what somebody else had to go through to get what they got. And again, I'm not talking about the car they drive. I'm not talking about the money in their pocket. I'm talking about the presence and the power of God that's within their life. God will give you what you can handle. Thank God that he doesn't give you more than that. Everyone has been given not only a gift, but let me tell you what this is. This really, did you put it back in your pocket again, man? You're hanging on to that. Time. Come on, get it out there where I can see it. What he empowered each one of these, forget about the amounts now. What he empowered each one of them is with an opportunity. I'm going to give you something that is not yours. I'm going to give you something that you don't have, but I'm going to put it in you and I'm going to give you opportunity to do something with it. Each one of you have been given opportunity. Not only have you just been given gifts, but the key is what are you going to do with those gifts? It's not what you've been given, but what you do with what you've been given. But many of us are griping and complaining because of what we don't have. Don't be griping and complaining about what you don't have. Start using what you do have. Each one of us have gifts. Each one of us have abilities. Each one of us have talents. Quit looking at what somebody else, well, he's got five, well, he's got two, well, he's got one over there. Quit looking at what somebody else has. Look at what you've got in your hand and what you've got in your hand, that's what God is gonna hold you responsible for. Can I get an amen? Which brings me to my next point. Everyone will be asked, what did you do with what I gave you? What will you do with what I gave you? What did you do with the fiver? What did you do with the two? What did you do with the one? When he returned, that's what he asked. What are you doing with what I gave you? So now, let's find out what the results were. So he came to the guy who had the five talents and he said, all right, I gave you five. I'm back now. What, do you, what did you give me? Well, he's got 10 for me here. Gave him a five. He went out, worked it, used it. Gave me five. I got 10 now. You just got the two. What'd you got back for me? You got four for me. I gave you two. You went out, give me four back. What type of return, mathematicians, get ready. What type of return did this guy give me? A what, how much return? 100%, 100 to five is five. Double that, that's 10. What did he give me that I gave two? 100%. It's not what you got, it's what you do with what you got. God's looking at what do you do with what you got. Both of them gave him a 100% return. They were both excellent in their level of what they had. Well, I only had two, so I shouldn't be required to do as much as him. He had five. Quit looking at what somebody else got and say, what am I going to do with my two? Because when it's all said and done and God comes back, he says, five. We say, well, man, this is the guy. He's the one. He, he got 10. God's not counting the 10. He's counting what did you do with the 10 or the five? What did you do with the two? Both of these guys right down. He said, well done. You guys did great. The key is, what are you going to do? He said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Oh, I could preach right now. See, you're griping, complaining, you got talents, you got gifts, and you're sitting there and God says, if you'll take them and use them, God wants to come to you and say, well done, you're good. Good means you accomplished something. You're faithful, you didn't give up on it. It's not about the amount, it was about the return on the amount. He, again, he, he said to him, well done, good and faithful. You have been faithful. I'm going to make you rulers over men. In other words, I'm going to increase your influence. 
I can never get ahead. I'm just, I'm not going to. That guy always gets it. That guy, always, he's always the one. You know why? Because he takes what God has given him. He takes his talent and he's faithful with that talent. He's good with that talent. And God says, now I can, I'll invest in you. God says, you took what I gave you. He wasn't interested in the amount. He said, you took what I gave you and you gave 100% back to me. Some of y'all are not giving 100% back. I'm preaching better than you're shouting today. Oh, that didn't get you. He said, I'll make you rulers over many. He said, enter now into the joy. Enter now into joy. Let me just tell you, you're wondering why you're not going into the next level? You know you're, why you're not getting to the next experience that God has for you? Because you're not using the talents and the gifts and the abilities that God has given you. But if you will use those, I don't care if it's parking cars. I don't care if it's ushering. I don't care if it's taking care of a child. I don't care if it's cleaning a carpet. I don't care if it's making phone calls or working in the office or working in the kitchen. If you will use what God has given you and you'll give a hundred percent and quit your griping and quit your complaining God says well done good and faithful I'm going to take you to the next level enter into the joy hey see those who are working those who are engaged those who are taking the talents and investing and giving a hundred percent they're the ones that have got the joy this is the old sourpuss on the stage. One thing so happy about over there, goody two shoes. Look at him, I'm always getting out there. And then I'm entering in. Well, just go on with your big bad self. I'm just going to sit here. So that then brings us to this guy. Then verse 24, then he who I received the, how, how, many, how many did you get? You got one. So he says, all right, give me back, give me back what I gave you. What did you do for me? But this is what I gave you. Bible says that what this servant said, he said, Lord, I know you'd be a hard man reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered. And I was afraid. And I went and hid my talent in the ground. But look, I've got it. It's yours. I'm right where I started, the master would say. I'm right where I began with you. You're at the same sticking place I was when I left. I left. I invested in you. I gave you a dollar. I, did, I gave you these. But what have you done with this? You do nothing with it. You're at the same stinking place as where I left you. I didn't get where I was, the king would say, the master would say, the business. I didn't get where I was by doing what you did. I got where I was by these good and faithful guys. So you return. You return the one. He said it was because I, that I feared. And because he was Afraid, he said, I went and hid this. Here's what he did, friends. He hid his talent and exposed his fear. He hid his talent and exposed his fear. Well, I'm afraid to do that. I can't, I never, I can't do that. I can't do that. So I'm just going to sit here with my talent. And how many people sit in churches Sunday after Sunday? How many people in the body of Christ that are necessary that we need you? But you've got your talent in your hand, and it's all because of fear. Let me tell you what you need to do. It's time that we bury our fear and we expose our talents. It's time that we bury our fears and expose our talents. I've already preached to you. You are necessary. God put gifts in you. You've got gifts and you've got abilities that are going to make this church a better church, that is going to make this body a stronger body, that is going to enable us to do what we need to do to bring this city back to God. But sadly, there are those that are just sitting on their talents. So with that then in mind, he gave back his one dollar that he had been given the one dollar these guys had how much return what was the percentage of return here 
What was the percentage of return here? What was the percentage of return here? Goose egg. Nada. Zilch. Taking up space. How many are having a good time today? You're just enjoying today's message so much. It's so encouraging. All right, guys, I'm through with you. Go sit down. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Come on, musicians. See, it's that one guy that gives us all the trouble. And you know I could preach on that. It's the guy who is not using his talent that is holding us back. I talked about mountain climbers and not moving forward to the next level. And we're praying, oh, God, we're going to go to the next level. We're going to... But there are some that are not using their talents. Should have put him on the end. Not using their talent. And because of that, it hampers the rest of us from going forward. I've got a challenge for you today. I believe this year God is ready to take you to a new level. A new experience. A new joy that he has for you. But if you're wondering what's holding you back, are you praying? Are you involved in the word of God? Are you, are you doing that? But, but then nextly, are you using the talents that God has given you? Or do you just come and set and soak and sour? Or are you investing that? Are you pouring into the lives of people? Hey, it takes time. It takes effort. It takes getting here early. It takes being committed, saying, no, I'm going to be there. I can't go to the coast this week. I've got a responsibility at the church. And there's so much that is available to us. I mean, in every ministry here at the church of what we could do to advance this kingdom. I've got a vision for what I believe God wants to do through, with Cornerstone through television and through the internet. I don't have enough camera workers to do that. Of what, what God wants to do in our children's ministry, but I don't have enough children's workers to do it. What God wants to do to advance us to more services, but I don't have enough ushers to do it. And I could just go down the list of areas of a community that needs to be fed, but I don't have enough workers to do it. What's holding us back? It's not God. And I'm not worried about finances. It's this person right here with the one talent. Don't let fear control you. Don't hide your gifts and your abilities. I don't care what you, I don't care what abilities that you have. And you have them. Someone says, I'm a truck driver. You know, we got trucks over there that we drive every day. I, I'm, I'm good in the kitchen. I, well, I can make a mean lasagna. Well, we feed the hundreds of men every Tuesday night and all other types of ministries that we have. If it was me, I'd have food at everything. I'd have food here today if I had enough cooks to do it. Again, I could go, I, you're a construction worker. I, I pour concrete. Do you know how much concrete we've poured around here in the last few months? I mean, well, I, I like to sew. Who did all those costumes for Scrooge? I, I don't, I, well, I'm, I'm, I don't care what you've got, what talent you have. There's a place for you to use it here at Cornerstone. The question is, are you willing to do that? That may be the thing that's holding you back. So here's my first altar call today. I'm about to. If you say, Pastor, you know what? There are talents. Remember, everybody take your phone out. I left my phone down there. Everybody take your phone. That's right. I don't need it. I'm already doing something here. Well, take your phone out and I want you to text the word talent. If you are interested, if you say, Pastor, I want to get more involved, 
I, I want to give 100%. I want God to put the talent that I have. You may not think it's important, but I've already showed you in the Word of God, every member is important. Every member is necessary. You're not signing up for nothing. You're not committing to anything. You are just telling God, God, I need to get more engaged. Some of you are very engaged. Some of you are using. Some of you, are the, you're, you're giving 100%. But there's a lot that say, you know what? I really need to be doing more. I need to be engaged more. I need to be helping more with our purpose of bringing this city back to God. If that's you, then I want you to text the word talent again to that number that's up there. Just text it to 238-0507. I'll respond back to you. And in the next few days, we'll be responding to you and we'll correspond. And we'll find out, okay, are you serious? Do you really want to do that? Where's a place? We'll help you find somewhere that you're comfortable with. Because God didn't want to put a round peg in a square hole. Believe me, you'll, you'll like it. You'll enjoy it. It will fulfill you. But maybe that's the thing that's holding you back. And maybe that's the thing that's holding this local expression of his body back. So you say, yeah, I want to I get more involved in it. Text the word talent to 2380507. But you can't do that unless you are a part of the body of Christ. You can't do that until you've committed your life to Christ. I don't want to be on the outside looking in. I want to be a part of what God is doing. And maybe you're here today and you say, well, Pastor, my relationship with God is, is really not what it should be. Maybe you've never accepted Christ into your heart. Why not do that today? Why not be a part of the body of Christ? All of us are different. You've got something that God has placed within you that is going to bring joy into your life yeah. and is going to help you to utilize that to reach others.